Hi everyone, so your lab practical is coming up and I just wanted to make a video just giving you guys a few tips and hints in order to prepare for it. As usual, it's best to know all the concepts rather than remembering each bacteria that you use in each part of the lab. Now, you should know an example of a bacteria for a positive and negative result in each of the labs, but most of the questions, as you'll see in a minute, will be testing you on your concepts and knowledge of the labs. So you'll want to know why you did in the lab, why you did each step, why you did it in this order. So with your gram stain, you'll be asked, like, why, what was stained? And you'll say the peptoglycan. That's what's taking up all the dyes. And what's the purpose of iodine? If you forgot, iodine is the mordant, and the mordant increases the infinity of the primary stain so that when you use the decolorizer, it's less effective. And if you could give a gram, an example of a gram-negative bacteria, I believe you guys use E. coli. And the last question would be, how do you know? How do you know that it's gram-negative? And you would say that because it's pink. That when you use the, the decolorizer, that it leached the lipids and caused the peptoglycan to shrink, squeezing out all of the primary stain. Even if the primary stain had the iodine crystal violet complex, it squeezed that whole complex out. And all that was left for it to do was to take up the counter stain. And it might be a good idea to know, you know some of these experiments backwards. So if they said something along the lines of, what happened if you switched around the primary and counter stain? You know, there's no saffron in an iodine complex, but your results would then have your gram positive looking a little pinkish and your gram negatives looking violet. So you'll also want to understand is what happens when you have mishaps in lab. You know, like I said in the gram staining video is what happens when you over decolorize. Might be something that you want to look into. Okay, so as you can see here, out of the four questions that's being asked, only one deals with true memorization. So let's just say, even if I didn't get, even if I didn't get this one, if I completely forgot the bacteria that we used, you know, still throw something in there. Never leave anything blank because if you leave it blank, then you're for sure going to get it wrong. But if at least if you throw something in there, it could be right. Okay, so. I think you guys use B serious and E. coli the most, so pick one of those if you don't know an example of bacteria, because those are the ones that you use the most, so it would only make sense that it could be one of them, and maybe you'll get it right. All right, never leave anything blank, all right, for no reason at all should you leave anything blank. Getting back to the question, if you got this one wrong, could you still get this? And the answer is yes, because let's say is, you know, I threw something else in there. Or I left it blank for, for just right now. And I said, man, I don't know a gram-negative bacteria, but how do I know that it's gram-negative? Well, you know that the gram-negative does not take up the primary stain and only takes up the counter stain. And what color is the counter stain? It's pink. Right? So, if you know the concepts, you could get one, two, three, three of the questions, and then just have to guess on one of them. And sometimes your guess will end up being right. So for no reason, if you know all the concepts, should you be getting anything less than a 75 on this test? All right. I would say that the best way to study for this is to know the concepts because that's 75% of the test. And then go back and you know remember a few positive and negative results, giving you the other 25. Okay. And not every question is going to ask you for an example. But each test is gonna, each question is gonna ask you to explain the concept behind, behind either the whole lab or any given step. So that's where all your points are gonna come from. If you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. But like I said before, is the big big thing here is do not leave any blanks. All right, I look forward to hearing from you guys, and I wish you guys the best on your lab practical.